Edge okay? Yep. All right, well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks once again to all our partners in the media for joining us here tonight and uh, helping us connect with our public. Uh, we're on scene here at uh, 242 Cherry Street. We're operating at a uh, fifth plus alarm. We actually have enough uh, by resource count. We're operating at a sixth alarm. Uh, the facility involved, as you can see behind, is the, the Green for Life or GFL recycling facility uh, located here at 242 Cherry Street. So we were notified of a fire at this facility uh, shortly before 1 o'clock this morning. Uh, it escalated through the alarm levels very quickly and as you can see now, uh, we're dealing with a fully involved structure. Um, have some concerns with some exposures that our crews are managing and uh, of course we're operating in defensive, uh, defensive operations. One of the things that makes this incident unique for us is uh, a, a very significant portion of the fire suppression lines that are being flowed on this fire are actually being supplied from the William Lyon Mackenzie fireboat operating, uh, of course, just offshore. So uh, we're moving a large volume of water here. Um, crews are operating at a distance defensive, which means we're, we're not inside the building. It would be hazardous for us to do that. Uh, our command team has indicated some significant collapse risk in the area. So. They're outside the collapse zones, uh, working on defensive to control uh, control the fire at this point. We have uh, members of our hazardous materials unit here. Uh, that's that's a standard deployment for us at, at this alarm level. But they're working proactively with our operations crews. Um, we'll do everything we can do to control the runoff and make sure that we're, uh, to the extent we can, we're protecting for uh, whatever fire runoff is occurring outside of the fire. So. At this point, uh, still operating at a fifth. I suspect it's going to be a long night for our crews. Uh, we're joined here, of course, at every emergency scene. Uh, strong partnership with both Toronto Paramedics and Toronto Police Service. So, um, as the incident goes on, I'm happy to uh, to brief you further, answer any questions you may have. Any idea what kind of materials are we dealing with in here? It seems to be a real stubborn fire, even with the rain. It, it, it absolutely is stubborn. So one of the one of the significant challenges that this poses, both for the for the operator and now for our crews, is. Um, very hard to determine what's what's actually in the recycling material that's being brought in. So we, we treat this with the utmost of, of respect and caution. Um, it's certainly a mixed fuel fire and absolutely very, very stubborn. Chief, we've heard some, some concerns about air quality. Can you talk about that for those who maybe are smelling the smoke a great distance away? Yeah, there's there's been a large volume of smoke production here. That's that's normal. We would expect that. Um, let, you know, as we talk about at every incident scene, uh, smoke's never a good thing to be in if you can avoid that. Um, so if, if you're in the smoke plume, I would recommend you stay, you, you know, stay away. We're monitoring that to the best of our ability. The wind direction, um, wind's fairly light right now. It's been moving around a little bit, but uh, unfortunately with the predominant wind direction here, it is moving some of that smoke over downtown. So I do suspect that, that many of our residents will, will smell an odor or, you know, smell the the indication of fire in the air so um, no no immediate threat that I'm aware of we're, we're certainly working with with GFL and uh, we'll, our command team will be in contact with the Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Labor as things go on if we need to uh, take any further precautions. When the fire broke out was, was there actually employees in the building at the time or was it manned do we know? Yeah my understanding is there, there were staff on scene mm -hmm. uh, very quickly or you know shortly after our arrival our crews were able to confirm that all of this everyone was out of the building so um, to my knowledge, there's not been any injuries on scene tonight. Everyone's safe and accounted for, and uh, the staff that are here are now working uh, in collaboration with our fire investigation unit that is here as well to start gathering some building information and logistics and some background so that we can inform our forward crews. What about employees that are not only at this factory but nearby buildings and uh, properties? What's your advice for them in the morning? Should they even come out? Just try and get to work. Yeah, I think it's too early for us to make that determination at this point. Uh, once we get on scene. Uh, looks like they're they're trying to get an aerial past us here. Um, once we once we get on into the operation, we'll see uh, we'll see what that looks like and be in, in contact. But a little early a little early for us to uh, to be figuring that out at this point. Matthew Pegg, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, Pegg, P-E-G-G, -G. I'm the Fire Chief, Toronto Fire Services. Oh, one other thing. Uh, initially, you guys had a, a situation where there was no hydrants on the property. Can you, can you speak to that? Yeah, so this is uh, this is not uncommon in, in the pier area for us. There is, there's often some distance and 
Um, that's why very early on into the response, our crews, our command team made the decision to deploy the Mackenzie fireboat. So we, we are connected to municipal hydrants. We're, we're, we're supplying this fire from, from a number of different sources, but we have a, a, an immense water pumping capability on the William Lyon Mackenzie. So the boat is moving a lot of, a, a lot of water for us, uh, being supplied through 100 millimeter supply lines coming off the boat. So it's uh, a, a little bit complex for the command team to manage and for all of our ops crews. And of course, not, not a very nice night, but uh, it's going to be a long night, but we'll be okay. Chief, these recycling facilities have a little bit of a history of fire across the province and the country. Is this a place that you would have done fire familiarization, been here and had a look? And yeah, for sure. Our, our crews, the crews that, uh, for which this is in the response areas are familiar with this area. We have really, uh, we have fairly robust pre-planning maps here that they're accessing. So from a pre-planning pre perspective, I think everything's in place. Our investigation team is here. Uh, that, you know, as that goes on right now, they'll be in the interview phase talking to people that were here. Um, that will ultimately move on throughout the incident into a full origin and cause and circumstances, uh, you know, investigation so that we can understand what contributed to the fire, uh, what caused the fire, and what were the, what were the contributing circumstances, but we're, we're a long way from that at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.